Good morning, everybody. How are we all doing today? So happy it's Thursday. Also, we got the uh, NHL playoffs have begun. Let's go Caps. So, I want to talk to you guys a little bit today. Uh, obviously, we talk about video games pretty frequently. So, I want to talk a little bit today about the video game, video game menu design. Um, and more than just designing a nice GUI for a video game. I'm talking about actual like theory behind how you would design a video game menu. And now I am, I, I have the vaguest understanding of programming. I've programmed a little bit in basic and C++, uh, very amateur stuff. So I have the vaguest recollection of how to do this kind of stuff. Not a professional in any regards. It was a very amateur, user-ended perspective. But I'm intrigued by this, and I don't know why some of them can get as frustrating as they as they are. Uh, the biggest thing for me, <clears throat> and I'm talking menus now, menus should be able to control entire aspects of the way that the game is played. Um, and the biggest thing that frustrates me, especially about older games where I can probably understand the limitations, uh, the game from hardware limitations, but it would be that I'm playing a game, and there's multiple people who I'm playing the game with. I'm either in college, and my roommates are playing also, or I got brothers and sisters. And the load screen just shows you every single save file that there is. And then you gotta figure out, okay, which one's mine? And some of them, it would be kinda cool because they would say the title of the character. So if you renamed your main character, then that's, you'd be looking for the one that says Russ versus the one that says Ben versus whoever else. That at least would kinda help. But I don't understand why we don't just have profiles. Um, and especially when you start getting into unlockable achievements, the very first thing the game should ask you is, what's your profile? All right. So now that you've made your profile, let's see your characters. And I think that, that for a simple game, um, I can't think of a good example, but some something that's very, a bit simpler um, and is designed to be played through the campaign once, maybe twice, and isn't very different every time you play through, that's one thing, because in that situation, you've only got one save file. But for something that's quite a bit more complicated, like Gauntlet Dark Legacy, or um, the one I was thinking of was Champions of Norath, uh, that can get very complicated, because you're designed to play through multiple times and pick up different characters, and every time you play through each character, the way it's played through, it affects something else. And I'm thinking of Diablo. Diablo, especially Diablo 3, that menu worked great for one user. Uh, so you'd log into your profile and then all your settings would be right there and um, watching a merge here, excuse me. The merge is going okay, it's just going, seems like he's slowing down for no reason whatsoever. So I'm just being very careful. But when you set up multiple characters, especially on a console, the GameCube type era, uh, it, it got kind of frustrating trying to figure out who was what. So I think the big thing you can take there is profile. You have a profile, if, if the Rust profile has got multiple characters in it, and then multiple characters, the Rust profile can say, you've beaten the game this many times. Here are your characters. This character has beaten the game five times. Uh, think of uh, Resident Evil 4. You had to go through and you had to beat it multiple times in order to get to some of the bigger weapons. Uh, you, shoot, you ever play Parasite Eve 2? Parasite Eve 2 was awesome in that regard. Because you'd go through and you'd beat it a second time, you'd get a lot of the resources from your first time through, it'd still be a challenge, but you'd have all these cool guns. Do speed, speed runs where you could, I was able to breeze through the game in under two hours and I'm not a professional speed runner. I think the top time for the game, something like 36 minutes. Um, and I beat it in one setting under two hours, not at any stretch a world record, but it's kind of like saying, hey, I ran a marathon, it only took me seven hours. Dude, you ran a marathon, good job. Um, regardless, uh, the profile I think is the biggest thing. Universal settings within the profile. Um, and then the other thing is, is um, actual game options. So some games um, with dialogue, huge thing though to be able to control the audio on the four different levels your sound effects your music your dialogue and then if there's a fourth which would be something like ambient noise or um, I've seen something other than ambient noise it, it allows you to control all four independently that's huge 
controls. Controls are tricky because you get great customization when you're playing on a computer, but when you get that customization, it it hasn't been the game itself has not been designed for that. So a lot of times the controls can feel kind of twitchy. And then it's, you get a game like Dead Space, which there's a thousand things you can do. You need a million buttons in order to do this. I want them to design it for me. I want them to engineer the best way to do this. Because then I'm trying to hit this button and this button and this button all at the same time so that I can stasis, run, and stomp. Uh, and then it, it, it becomes a chore just trying to learn it. It's easier to learn how to play uh, three new chords on a guitar than it is to learn how to simply stasis a monster, run up to him, and stomp on him. So uh, control, I don't have an answer for you there. Control can just be frustrating, but you definitely need to have options for control and to be able to save that on your profile because very frustrating when you're trying to play a game and then um, you have to switch controls around for some reason, then you try to switch them back. Profile is important, to say the least. Um, so if you can just organize everything around the profile, I think we'll be uh, in much better shape. And I think a lot of games are starting to do this now. Uh, I did not see that with Breath of the Wild, but then again, Breath of the Wild, you don't get anything for finishing the game. And I think that is one of my very favorite things you can do in a game is, all right, so you finished the game how many times? And did you get all of the secrets? And did you get all of this and that and the other? And now guess what? You've gone through and you've achieved everything. Um, one of the best, there was this old game, uh, skater game, was not a Tony Hawk game, it was called Grind Session. The game was awesome. There were 10, 12 levels you'd go through and certain things that you needed to find in each level and tricks you needed to do and needed to get above a certain score and then you'd achieve every single one in each level and there was a single screen that showed you every single thing that you'd accomplished. Uh, kind of a, a la Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze or... Um, New Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario 3D World, uh, where you'd look at one screen and would say, okay, you've gotten everything for these levels. And it would show you right there, okay, well, level five, you're missing two things. Everything else is square, so you go to level five. I really like that a lot. And if you can link that with your profile, then you can say, look at this. This is my profile. I've achieved all of these things. I've gotten everything. That's it. Game's complete. Um, and that way, it's a lot less nebulous. Like, with Zelda, I mean, I didn't even know. The game didn't tell me how many shrines there were. Which is good, because I don't want the game to tell me outright. There's 120 shrines, go find all of them. But when you finish the game, I would expect it to say, Great, you finished the campaign. Here's all these other things that you can do. There's still shrines that need to be found. With the power of the spirit orbs, you could, you know... Give me a reason to run through and get them again. Uh, I'm just, I go back to Resident Evil 4 and 5. Resident Evil 4 and 5 and Parasite Eve 2 were awesome because you go through the game again on a different difficulty level, achieving new things, getting more money, getting new weapons. And you get these giant weapons, you can just absolutely plow through some of these enemies. Um, the bounty mode in Parasite Eve 2 is awesome because it kind of focused you on your does, your job is to now go through and get the biggest and baddest weapons and just blow through these enemies. I and mean, you had this, this one absurdly ridiculously large Gatling gun 200 rounds and you just sit there plowing away at an enemy and before they could even touch you you'd already done you'd already hit them with 50 rounds and they were toast uh, it was a lot of fun playing that way uh, regardless what are some video games that you like the menu design on and kind of the the layout of the GUI and the way that it integrated into the game uh, I've already told you mine grind session and um, Diablo, Diablo 3 uh, were my favorites. Love those a lot. Um, but then uh, get frustrated with some other ones. And do you think it's getting better? And what's the future hold for this kind of stuff? Is it going to be your online content? You pop the game in, you log into your account, everything's right there, a la Steam with the, the cloud-based or, or Xbox. Um, I'm sure PlayStation has it too. I haven't owned a PlayStation since PlayStation 2. Um, so I can't speak to it. I don't want to hear what you say.